Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Believe in UCLA football podcast. My name is James Williams, a reporter and and an editor for the Orange County Register and the Southern California News Group. And as always, I'm joined here by former UCLA linebacker Josh Woods. Josh, I'm tired. I was on the freeway for like three and a half hours coming back from UCLA. Um, but it's all part of the grind, right? So I'm all for it. It's not the end of the world. I had Chick-fil-A, so that was good. But how was your day? What's going on with you, Josh? I mean, it was a good day for me. I didn't have to do all that. Um, getting ready <laughs> to go back to Canada. So uh-huh. that's cool. And yeah, when I went to a practice, it was Saturday, so the traffic was cleared up. Yeah, I got to get on that Saturday grind. So actually, real quick, before we get started, we'll talk about your about your visit on Saturday. But have I told you? OK, so there were some, you know, all the kids are coming. They're visiting from their different schools and whatnot. And, and this school from Vegas came down and they OK, they went to USC practice in the morning and then went to UCLA practice. Have I told you what time the USC practice starts? Seven. No. Earlier than that? Yes. 6.30? No. 6 a.m.? No. 5.30? F- Lincoln has Lincoln Riley has them out there at 5 a.m. like once or twice a week. That's insane. So my colleague For has what? to go out. My colleague is standing out there taking videos of practice in the dark. Like it's literally still dark. I don't, I don't know. know what's going on over there, but they just <laughs> this has been seeing weird things like having them doing up downs on the concrete in front of the Coliseum. Like I haven't seen that. That's crazy. <laughs> it's on it's on their page. And that just doesn't make sense to me. It, it doesn't doesn't make sense for the athletes to be doing that. And like, Mm-mm. I don't know what's going on over there, man. It's crazy times over there. But let's get back to Westwood. Um, speaking of Westwood, you had a trip out to Westwood, paid a visit. Uh, to your alma mater how was it man it was such a great time and like the energy is back like it's a it has me fired like i wish i was on this team it it made me feel like the old days just seeing all the you know familiar faces and Mm -hmm. just yeah the energy of practice was intense off off the rip um me and chris barnes went together to this practice and um as soon as we Walking up to the building, we got showed love, you know what I'm saying? Um, just immediately, and then before practice, we got down on the field. And first, the first two people that come to us is Scott White and Coach Foss, mm-hmm. and just come and chop it up with us and you know, ask how we're doing and everything. And then, and I mean, I've told them before, so give me a few years and, and I'll be on the staff. <laughs> and one of the things that Coach Foss told me is he ain't going nowhere. So that's I, th- I think that's a big thing for the for the mm-hmm. program of somebody that, you know, believes in it and understands that, you know, this is going to be a process, but he's all in for it. Um, and then they were like, oh, we're about to start this this practice up with um, like a Oklahoma, like a one on one's Oklahoma drill to start oh, yeah. practice off. There was like a lot of hype. Yeah, there was a lot of hype for this one. Yeah. So they had, I mean, they had the little prone video I think you've seen on social That's media not, where yeah, I saw they it. had the matchups on the board. I'm like, okay, this it was like this some street fighters. Of... <laughs> but okay, so like I think this is a build up. I think we're about to bring Pride Alley back for the fans okay. that know, you know, the OG UCLA Bruin fans of back in the Bruin Revolution. You can look up Pride Alley on YouTube and and, and see what, what that's all about, which is pretty much a an extended version of Oklahoma drills. And I think it's a build up to getting back to that. I would love to see pride alley take place in the Rose bowl for Mm -hmm. the, for the spring game. That would be electric. Um, So, you know, that's how they, they open it up. I'm, I was right in the huddle of everybody. I was, I was close. (laughs) You know, I had to move out the way a few times, but that's what I wanted to to feel, Mm -hmm. you know, be a part of the practice. And um, I mean, from from then on, just the the tempo, the the energy, you know, having music, having I mean, a lot of running around. I know Coach Foster has mentioned it. Just they do a lot of running, um, which I I, that's one of the parts I I don't think I would have liked as a player because it's (laughs) pretty much conditioning the whole practice. But uh, it's going to pay off you know, during the season when you're not tired and able to, you know, get stronger as the game goes on. Yeah. That was one of the things that they mentioned, or that was intentional um, that I guess they don't spend a lot of time. Like they don't do conditioning periods more or less, 
but it's like after each play, you'll notice them. I think they're running, even kind of said today, like they'll run 40 yards after the play, um, which I kind of thought like, why stop at 40? Go, go. I thought the whole thing was a run into the end zone. But they I, I mean, no, no, no. So, you know, no, so, so it is. So even, so even say they're doing a short yardage period. So it could be like third mm-hmm. and one. And usually, I mean, back in the day, it'd be like, defense gets to stop you get the jog off the you know jog off to the side you won the rep mm-hmm. but when when you're done as a defense your plays are done you're running all the way back to the end zone which can yeah, be right i mean if you're a safety i guess it could be shorter but that's d lineman running yet yeah, 40 yeah, yards right and it's a mm-hmm. it's a full sprint you know what i'm saying where nobody wants to be last and everybody's really hauling to get there um and yeah you see guys getting after it like you you know what I'm saying? Where I'm saying that's the yeah. thing where I understand where coach saying we want to save their legs because when you're going that high intense um with these team periods, it can wear on you. So I understand why um you know you have shorter days and try to try to get the guys' legs back and be able to be full go. And like like you said, like the numbers might not be there, so you want to you know keep everybody healthy so you can have as many bodies throughout the the whole duration of spring ball. Um, So one of the things I wanted to ask you, and you kind of talked about like the tempo of practice and whatnot. Obviously, I think from the media standpoint, we noticed things moved a lot faster with Chip, like whether it was like no huddle stuff or just in in general, maybe I guess maybe by like year three and four, everything's kind of, you know, the basic stuff's kind of the foundation is kind of laid for the offense. So they're probably moving a little bit quicker. And that's kind of what I think is happening with the enemy in the offense. Everything's a little bit slower. Um, the word that they hit that Eric B mentioned when we talked to him and uh, coach Foster talked about was installs and kind of how they're just getting like the base install stuff in. Um, and I think the goal is to try and have two installs or have, have that Wednesday and Friday. No, wait, what is it? No, Tuesday and Thursday practices be like install day. And then the Saturday is kind of that review of what you learned throughout the week. And you can also, they have that fun kind of, you know, all the fun stuff that you kind of got to see. Um, is that kind of normal? Is that kind of, you know, and, and just tell me a little bit about what the install stuff is like, just like, what is in general, what does that mean? Or what could it mean? Um, is it just like a package or a formation or, or how, how does it kind of laid out to you guys as players? Yeah. I mean, it makes a lot of sense to have this, this kind of pattern of Tuesday, Thursday, and then, you know, mm-hmm. review Saturday because that's kind of similar to how it's going to be during the season. You know, usually have installs um, day one and two, maybe day three, um, the the work days of the week. And then Saturday is the game, which is, you know, the ultimate test. So installs are I mean, it could be packages, formations and plays. I mean, it's just a group. It's just a group of plays for the day of, you know, maybe this is what we're running this week. That could be the install. Um, but for spring, I mean, they're definitely, you know, laying down the foundation foundation. So installs are, are going to be you know the first install is going to be pretty you know could be pretty generic and then the second install could be a new package and certain new play third install could be certain blitzes or a different family of plays you know what i'm saying offense is very different than defense when it comes to installs because right. offense definitely has a lot more plays and variations defense there's there's only so many covers you could play i mean you could dial it up with, with blitzes and and disguises but there's only so many coverages um you know that defense can play so and at the same time this is a brand new offense versus defense i think there's some there's a lot of similarities yeah, um from from you know carry over with malloy um and you know there are a few new pieces on the staff you know scott white tony washington and um and they're like i've i've heard from them personally that um the players are helping them you know kind of pick up the things that they already know and, you know, and carry over. And then, so, um, the, yeah, different paces. And I mean, I started the practice watch of the offense and coach EV was definitely yeah. like, for what, you know, <laughs> what I heard, I saw it in person. And if he, yeah. it doesn't matter who you are, if you mess up, he's going to get on you. Mm-hmm. And, um, <clears throat> as a player, you gotta love that because I mean, that's just getting you better. And, um, right. he definitely is, is trying to build that up. I think, this whole thing, this year is going to be a process. I mean, and I think the fans, alum, and everybody needs to understand that, you know, that, I mean, of course we want the quick results, but I think, you know, it's just going to be a process and building on it. So as long as everybody can stay together, um, the future is bright, but there might be, you know, some rough patches. So, um, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think so. That's a good point. So actually, so that's the, one of the things that us in the media, we kind of learned pretty early on is like, oh, OK, uh, EB is going to kind of be that vocal coach, much like Norton kind of was uh, last year. Um, so so EB, he, you know, he's very kind of he, he doesn't hold back. And so the one thing and I'm not calling out TJ Harden or I'm not trying to embarrass him or whatever, but um, the first practice we saw. EB was getting on TJ Harden. And what I took away from that was, oh, like he's not going to be like, oh, that's my starting running back. He gets a pass. Like he's like, <laughs> he was going after everybody. He doesn't care like who you are if you're the starting quarterback, starting running back, whatever mm -hmm. the expectations were. It's kind of just a clean slate as far as he knows with everybody. Right. Um, but it was kind of refreshing though, too, because when we got to talk to him, um, we we the the media got to interview him for the first time since he had been hired and he's a great interview he's really good and he was very calm he was very kind of like classy in his approach and just you know he often would refer to them as like young men or like have this understanding of like they're more than just players or they're more than just chess pieces on a board like mm -hmm. he's trying to teach them life lessons and and other things at the end of the day right like I don't know. It was like, even if, even if it's just him saying all the right things, even if you're just saying all the right things, that means you're still kind of semi aware of, of what, you know, what you're trying to present. Right. So um, I, he came off very impressive, um, but it is kind of, um, kind of two different sides of the coin when you're seeing him in the middle of practice. And obviously you're in the middle of practice. So it was a little bit intense, but um, it was funny. Someone even mentioned that about TJ Harden kind of getting, um an earful from eb on twitter and um tj harden's mom said like uh tj has no problem with that like he's all about it he knows that eb is a guy who had been in the nfl and you know eb is gonna kind of help guide him and lead him and teach him all the things that he needs so he can prepare himself for the next level so he's like you know it's not something that uh tj harden is is like kind of taking personal or anything like that so you know, I just thought it was kind of refreshing to see that. And I think that it, at least for me, when I was on the football team, um, if if you if you see the star player getting yelled at and they don't get the special treatment, it for me, it kind of went a long way because it's not like they're just kind of making an example out of all the backups and just, you know, giving favoritism mm -hmm. to the starters. So, yeah, um, I, thought, I, 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 I think he sees greatness. I think he sees greatness in Harden. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's why he's so tough on him. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, it, you know, I, I think one of the things I've noticed, too, is like the conditioning isn't there for a lot of the guys. But again, it's only the the first full week of spring uh, practice. But um, Eric Bieniemy did mention that he was impressed with the offense so far, just from the fact that I guess they did a spring practice before spring break. And so maybe there was a little bit of the basics that he kind of presented to them, maybe gave them some sort of a, a basic playbook or something. But he said that the offense picked up the early stuff pretty quickly, and they were already ahead of schedule in terms of what it was that he was trying to present and put out there. So um, he was kind of happy with what he saw from, from the guys early on, and he kind of admitted, like, hey, there's going to be some good days. There's going to be some bad days. You know, there's – I think the, the day we talked to him, he's like, hey, the defense had a hell of a day. You know, they, they, they looked good out there, and we have some things to work on. But – We'll come out the next day and we'll try and have a better day and whatnot. So, again, I think it was kind of just cool to hear that, at least if I was a player, to know that my coach has that understanding of, hey, we're all still just trying to learn this together here. So it's like some days are going to be uglier than others. But um, it, it's definitely a different vibe for sure. Um, it's a lot more relaxing, I think, even just for us in the media. And um, it's just kind of interesting watching Foster kind of, go and watch the cornerbacks and then go over to the safeties and whatnot. Uh, we were even kind of joking uh, with Martin Jarman, who was there at, at the first practice, um, who said when he showed up to practice, he caught EB and uh, Deshaun Foster, both being former running backs over with the running backs. And Martin Jarman was like, what are you guys all doing? And he, and then <laughs> Deshaun Foster made the joke. He's like, I mean, if he would have came five minutes earlier, he would have seen me with the defense. Of course he would have just caught me with the running backs. Um, so everyone kind of got a laugh out of that. Like, Foster can't get away from the running backs, but no, but it, it's just been interesting to kind of see Foster kind of work the fields um, and take everything in. And it's kind of good. I, I mean, 
it, it would be easy to compare him to Chip Kelly and say, oh, yeah, it's two different styles. But um, it's just been refreshing with some of the, the different things that we've seen out there. Um, I think for those who haven't been following my tweets, even just um, the punt return guys, it's a little bit more normalized than what others were were used to seeing last year with a, a big body like Colson Yankoff, obviously, um, returning some balls. But um, you have Keegan Jones, Logan Loya. Um, I think Jalen Davies was even in that mix a little bit. And then I'm blanking on another name. But um, they're obviously, you know, trying to get the most out of all these different guys, put them in different positions. Um, are you familiar with David Magna? I think you said you were, right? Yeah. So I know he made that transition to play center. Yeah. Um, he's the, he's kind he, of the next defensive lineman to switch over. Moffy, boss, right? Every, there's kind of been some successful guys that have made that switch. So. Yeah, I mean, and um, the reasoning for him, he felt like center is his best bet of having a shot at the mm-hmm. NFL. Um, so that was sacrificing maybe being a rotating on rotation on defense, you know, was mm-hmm. um, him going all in and taking a shot at, at moving to center. And he was a smart kid. So um, if he if he can figure it out, there's potential there. Yeah, and I think that's obviously just the one hole on that offensive line. We did talk to Josh Carlin today. Um, they seem to be very happy with uh, Juan Castillo taking over, who's a, a pretty experienced um, coach from the NFL. Uh, Josh Carlin even joked and said that um, uh, Juan Castillo had been coaching in the NFL longer than he's been born. So there's a whole lot of experience that comes over on that offensive line. And, um, you know, they we'll see it. Things look promising right now, right? And if, if you can get the center situated um, and get that kind of locked down, I think it, these guys can at least take a step forward with most of them kind of being in their second year together. Um, obviously, having guys like Garbers and TJ Harden will help um, make things familiar there for the offense. Um, one thing, one guy who stood out to me, maybe you saw the same thing, or maybe you know, if you were to go again, someone to keep an eye on. Did you see Titus number two out there at all? Did you kind of see him running around making plays? Because he was kind of a standout for me early on. Um, I don't know if there was any guys that stood out to you on offense other than Harden. Um, on offense, I mean, having Keegan Jones back there, he looked fast. Keegan Jones, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, Hudson Hammermill. Yep. And um, I'm blanking on his name. The other, the tight end that transferred from Oregon last year. Oh, Mo- Maliki, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Maliki 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 Maliki. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, all the receivers flying around, looking yeah. loyal, look good. Um, but Justin Martin, I think, out of the bunch, was somebody that yeah. caught my eye. People kept asking me about him. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of people want to see him get a shot. And um, from what I've seen, I hope he does get opportunity eventually. Um, and if it comes down to a battle, you know, like have a fair shot at it. I know Ethan Garbers is the vet um, and has had the most playing experience, but um, I think Justin Martin has has looked good and um, should be given a fair shot. I think one of the more refreshing things from the – I'm so glad you mentioned Justin Martin because, one, everyone's been asking me about him, too, the same way they've been asking you. But um, for as – crowded as that quarterback room was last year it's kind of thinned out um i mean you're gonna have some freshmen coming in whatnot but it's like you kind of you know you see ethan garbers working with the first team you see justin martin working with the second team and those guys will you know obviously compete but it's not this crowded rotation of guys all competing for the first team reps dante moore everybody um Mm -hmm. uh, colin schley has transferred out uh, Deshaun Foster said he wants to be closer to home, um, and and that may have been a factor for him and in, in his decision to transfer. But he transferred out, so obviously that kind of opens the door even more for someone like Justin Martin uh, to kind of really get those second team reps and kind of be uh, someone that the fans are obviously excited about because they were asking me about Justin Martin when he was a freshman, and I'm like, the dude's a freshman, and and DTR still on the team. Like, <laughs> you're not gonna see a lot of Justin Martin, um, but yeah, I, I think Justin Martin's. It's kind of his time. He's going to – and and Deshaun Foster even kind of said that. Like, this is his time. This is his time to step up, have that chance to um, at least solidify himself as the backup. If not, you know, kind of push Ethan Garbers to be the starter. So, Yeah, I'm not saying for there to be a, you know, rotation and not know who the starter no, is every yeah, week no, no. like it was <laughs> last year. But what I'm saying is, is, you know, it's a long season. And, mm-hmm. you know, 
quarterbacks haven't played every game for us the past few years. So there's going to be a time where Justin Martin's going to have to go in the game. And um, I think he'll be ready. And uh, if it, I'm saying if in fall camp, if it came down to it and it'd be a real competition, I think, you know, yeah, let him have a fair shot. But if Ethan, you know, comes to fall camp looking like the guy, don't don't even make it, a, you know, a battle. Mm-hmm. So, um, like I said, that that's who it was. Defense, though. Yeah, let's talk about your defense. Tending. You know, you know me, because initially, like I said, I was watching the offense and then um, at a certain point. I was like, what am I doing? I'm a defensive guy. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was like, this is what they do for uh Indy. This is kind of boring. Let me go over to the defensive <laughs> side. I wanted to see, you know, what Scott White, Scott White had the linebackers doing. Um, mm-hmm. another thing when I first got there, one of the first guys players that came up to me and said hi and introduced himself to me was Femi. Um, okay, because yeah. I that was the first time I was able to to really meet him and mm-hmm. um he what do you what do you think big boy this, right this this is i mean it was like me looking at him eye to eye we both and it's like you i was like you know i used to be two and i was like oh, i like that you, yeah that's right I, I was like this makes you feel feel good man i'm glad that <laughs> two was somebody like you um but i i'm saying this now this is going to be his breakout year i think mm-hmm. you know you get him with more experience like i said with a guy like scott white to just you know get his IQ even higher. And if he just, you know, becomes more instinctual and just, just goes, um, I think he, he's the next, he's the next one. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got him, K. Madrano, and then you get Ali Cajo back. And I think yeah. those three is a, is a serious combination of, uh, you know, even the, um, Jalen Woods, it might yeah. be in the last name, but he, he stood out to me <laughs> with the twos, and I was like, okay. immediately I, I went to Chris, and I was like, he reminds me of Jayon Brown. Just mm. like, he's a ball player. You know, he's a gamer. He, you know, might not be the biggest guy, but he's right. going to make an offensive lineman miss, and he's going to get to the ball. And it's as soon as I brought it up to Scott White, and he was like, yep, I totally agree. So mm-hmm. um, that's a future name to look out for. Um, yep. You know, hopefully he continues to grow up and um can work his way into the rotation uh so yeah linebacker group solid interior d line you know look good with you know jay's big in there and mm-hmm. having Ciale move back from offensive line to d line yeah that's right the only thing that's my little brother but the only thing he needs to stay on sides he had a few a few offsides penalties <laughs> which i know if i was in there i would have been a little pissed but um he looked good run stopping and um playing in there uh i think the edges just need more experience i think run stopping is good i think pass rushing is going to be one of the biggest things that um we need to improve on and it's so crazy to me like if i'm a recruit if i'm in the portal and i think i think it'll be more known after this this draft when you see potentially four ucla edge rushers go to teams i'm including carl jones i don't i mean he'll be a probably inside linebacker or, or a different position in the nfl but um when you see yeah at least three get drafted with i think the mm-hmm. twins and latu and you're like yep. okay ucla is putting out edge rushers oh nobody else you know committed nobody else is i'm signing to ucla immediately because i know that they're produce one they're producing got getting guys to nfl which it should be everybody's goal and two it's like it's open so yep. um I think that the portal will will hit for us I think after the draft um in the next window um get some people in there because the the edge the edges that we have now I think they just have to keep developing pass rush because they can they can play the run like they they look in the run it looks normal to them so I think pass rushing mm-hmm. just needs to become you know more fluid um DB wise lot, lots of I feel like you know vets all around Jalen Davies looked really good. Um, Kirkwood on the other side. Um, and then Addison. Addison coming in, uh, seventh year guy. Yeah. I remember somebody's like, Who is that? Like, he's so tall playing DB. I'm like, Yeah, yeah. that's what everyone says. Yeah. He's because he, I like, there's no other safeties as tall as him. Like, he's going right. to be able to cover ground, um, you know, 
um, stop deep balls and jump balls and all that. So, um, like you said, w- with camp and with the offense understanding that everybody's going to have a day, when I went, it was a defensive day, which is mm-hmm. what I love to see. You know, there was <laughs> quite a few interceptions and takeaways and um, short yard to stops. So the defense looked good, and I'm I'm really um, excited to see how they build. And yeah, like I said, maybe a, a few more pieces that they add on the edges. Um, and you get Ali Cajo back, which I've heard that he's the guy. Like I said, Femi's the breakout, but Ali Cajo, I think, yep. is kind of what the the defense has been missing. Um, as far as, I mean, I love Darius, and I mean, he can go mm-hmm. sideline to sideline. Um, and I think Ali Cajo can kind of be that that for us. So him and, yeah, Femi. I think, you know, we're going to be in business on defense. Yeah. Um, so everyone, uh, just like they ask about Justin Martin, the same guy on defense, Ali Cajo. Everyone wants to ask about Ali Cajo. Everyone wants to know about Ali Cajo. So I make it a point to look out for him. Uh, today, we're recording this on what's today? Tuesday. Um, he was doing individual workouts. He's still kind of off to the side there as, as the team is kind of doing seven on seven, 11 on 11 stuff. So, He's still kind of working his way back. We asked Deshaun Foster again today. Um, that The first time we asked him after the first practice, he said next week. So this is now next week. Um, but he didn't want to put a, you know, he didn't want to kind of put a, a time or a date on him and say when he's going to come back. Just because if he doesn't come back, right? Like um, if he doesn't come back right away, but obviously he's working towards kind of coming back. Um, so obviously the minute I see him in the lineup, I'll tweet that with an update saying that he's kind of back, but, uh, it sounds like he's getting close. They're, they're kind of getting him going a little bit and, uh, we'll see where he fits in. Is he a guy, is, Fe- is Femi, he's kind of the guy in the middle, right? You're not taking Femi out of the middle or where, um, or, I haven't really been. The thing is how, how athletic Femi is. I mean, I think all those guys can kind of move around mm-hmm. and be in different packages and kind of, you know. If you want to go to a five down front in a certain situation, you could put Femi down outside. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Certain things like that. Yeah. Um, but as of now, I think, yeah, Femi is the true Mike. And um, the kind of Will and Sam's are kind of rotating around them. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if Ali Cajo will um, kind of rotate in that Mike spot or work on one of the outsides. But he looked antsy and he looked ready to go. Me personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't rush him in spring ball. I would kind of wait for mm-hmm. fall camp. Because and that, um, that's kind of what Deshaun I mean, doing. Yeah. guys are still young and guys are, you know, co- learning how to practice and learning how to compete, which is I mean, it's college. So mm-hmm. um, as, as the progression goes from high school up to pros, you see less people on the ground. Um, and, and, you know, in the pro level, if you're on the ground, it's it's that's a lot of times it's bad. Dudes are getting hurt or, uh, you know, that's how dudes get cut in college. You kind of are figuring that out, how to stay up. So I wouldn't rush him back in just because, you know, young guys are trying to, you know, get their feet wet. And um, guys that might might not have had the most experience playing last Mm -hmm. year are trying to, you know, earn a name with new coaches and show out and do certain things. Um, So I think the staff knows what Ali Cajo can do. And I think having him, you know, 100 percent ready for fall camp going into the the season is just more important than than, um, you know, having him get spring ball reps. No doubt about it. Um, real quick, just going back to the the edge rushers. So right now, working with the ones is Devin Apayu, I believe is the last name, and then mm-hmm. Jacob Busick, who is a well, actually, I had forgotten all about it, but Devin transferred from Notre Dame, I think, during the twenty twenty season or after before, I think after the twenty twenty season, he transferred in from Notre Dame. Um, I totally forgot he transferred in. Um. It had been that long. I just thought he had gotten uh, was brought in uh, to Westwood out of high school. But uh, and then Jason Jacob Busick is the other one who's just transferred in from Navy. Um, I guess Navy doesn't do like five years or, or wasn't really doing anything with the COVID year, so he had to go elsewhere. Um, so he came to UCLA. So those are the two guys who are working um, w- at, um, with the first team as edge rushers. But um, Deshaun Foster did not really kind of shy away from the fact that they will. Uh, explore the portal and that's going to be a priority. He's not saying um, he said he's happy with what he has and what, the, what those guys are, but just in terms of depth, like you need to address. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Edge, edge Bryant, a, uh, Shruthers, uh, transfer out earlier this week. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was like, Edge is, is definitely one of the most rotated, you know, spots on a mm-hmm. defense. Um, is yeah, is the D line and specifically edge rushers, guys that can, you know, come in on pass situations. I mean, that's what we saw uh last season is I mean, of course, the outside guys are all rotating in. You never know if there's going to be Latu and, and you know, one of the twins or or Carl and one of the twins. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they had that third down package, which is usually, you know, like a NASCAR package where all four guys are, are rushers. Right. You know, you take you take your nose out, you take your three tech out. And um, yeah, right now, I don't think we have the depth to be able to do that. And that's why I said uh, pass rushes is, is, is definitely one of the things we need to work on. Of course, we're going to the you know the Big Ten, and you know play style could be a little different. Where you you know that package might not be utilized as much. You need more run stop and ability, um, which I think we have. But when it's going to come down to those key third downs, I think we need to add a little more firepower. Um, yeah, no doubt about it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, there's, I think, a guy from Miami. Another guy from another, obviously, they got uh, Collins from from the University of Miami who transferred in as an edge rusher um, during the offseason. UCLA did. But there's another or another, excuse me, another Miami edge rusher who just went in the portal. A bunch of different guys are going to start going in the portal. That spring window opens just so everyone can mark their calendar is from April 15th through the 30th. Um, and just from the few times we talked to Deshaun Foster, he'll look at his, his Apple Watch and kind of like say, yep nine days away <laughs> so he's like kind of keeping track of of just kind of you know obviously what i mean he he there. missed yeah he he missed his you know the yeah the, oh, right. like the biggest wave of you know right to the season that mm-hmm. recruiting window so like this is a really important time and like his yeah his first time to really you know take advantage of the portal yeah and a lot of people see this window as like the Oh, you know, they kind of went through spring ball or, or they, you know, they're kind of early on through spring ball and they're kind of realizing that maybe they're not going to be in the rotation or they're not going to be a starter the way they maybe thought they were going to be or some. So you'll see some guys leave that way. But going back to USC, we don't have to spend too much time talking about USC, but I don't know if you saw today, but Bear Alexander went to the portal today. Um, he's a guy who. That name sound familiar. Yeah, he started on the defensive line for them last year, I believe. Um, he was a big transfer. He came, he transferred from Georgia, I believe. Um, and then the, the thing that they're saying is he's now going to be transferring to his seventh school in seven years, going back to high school. Like he went to like three different high schools, um, including like oh IMG. I think, he went, I think the last school last, like, I don't know what two high schools he went to before, but that, then I think he went to IMG, Georgia, and then USC. So he's definitely a, a big name. I'm not saying UCLA is going to get him, but. Those are the guys, like, there are, like, some starter quality guys that are out there. Um, yeah, he's more of a, a defensive tackle, I would imagine, more than an edge rusher. But there, there is still going to be some starter-level potential guys out there. And, obviously, everyone's hopeful that uh, because the Murphy twins and because lots of you came from the portal, they think, you know, there's probably going to be a little bit of a higher expectation for anybody anybody that they get. Uh, but I always I've, – I've kind of told the fans over the last month, don't have the expectation that – the next person who comes in there is going to be law to, or that you still have law to on the team because you're only going to, you know, be hurting yourself. If, if someone doesn't live up to expectation or they're not playing to the, the level law to was playing at, which is just hard to do because law to is on a whole different level. Um, obviously as a guy who's going to get drafted here in the first round, but um, yeah, I think the portal movement should be interesting. Um, I do want to mention uh, you mentioned the interceptions and then I, I, I want to get back to, some of the environment stuff um, as we do kind of wrap things up here a little bit, but um, you mentioned some of the interceptions for the defense. One of them was, I think Christian Dunbar Hawkins, um, Armand's son. Um, Mm -hmm. He had one of the interceptions, I believe. And then I, the other one was uh, Kanye Clark, um, which they kind of made a highlight out of, and they were playing. I don't know if you saw that video today on the, on the UCLA Facebook page. They were playing that in the meeting room and ended up getting a scholarship. Um, in the video, he says because uh, Deshaun Foster says because of that play, but he kind of expanded on it further. He just kind of liked um, what uh, Kanye Clark did during his freshman year last year. Um, so it was nice to see someone get a scholarship and you know kind of doing the surprise thing. They called him up in front of the team and, and the team kind of rallied around him and swarmed him. We haven't had one of those since. Ethan Fernea, I think. 
Like it's I'll been that long. Alex, Alex, Alex Johnson, Johnson, Alex Johnson, Alex Johnson was actually probably the last one, but even that was like two years ago. I mean, you're not gonna have one of those every year where it's uh made public. True, but, but usually, usually you have a, a guy or two every year that 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 you know earns mm-hmm. a scholarship, which is always always awesome to see and be a part of. Yeah, it was good to see. That was um, a big part of of the story I wrote today was just kind of including some of that because you always want to recognize those guys because you know it's always pretty impressive whenever you you kind of worked your way into a spot where uh whether you're a walk-on or whatever and you're, you're still able to catch the coach's eye and, and earn a scholarship for yourself um mm-hmm. so congratulations to him um i want to get back to more of your experience there saturday i always see as the big day during spring practice where you have a lot of the recruits and all these different uh families and kids and you know groups from the high schools or the seven on seven teams going um what was kind of that environment like? Did you see just a lot of young football players kind of walking around or what was just kind of the vibe of like just the, rec- the recruiting aspect? Not that you were in the, in the middle of it, but just kind of maybe what you saw from afar, just kind of being in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of uh, local high schools and JUCOs and them there with their coaches, and, um, you know, big groups of that. Yeah, it was, it was a good mixture of that and alumni. Um, mm-hmm. on the sidelines that day, and it's cool. Yeah, seeing the having open practice and seeing the fans along the wall again. Um, yeah, being able to, you know, be there and experience it, and hopefully, you know, they bring a little energy too to the practice. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's 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 alive and and like I said, the energy is is good in Westwood, and um, excited excited you know to see how this continues to grow. Yeah, there's been a lot of positive stuff just with like different coaches that I've uh, different high school coaches that I've talked to or some of the players, um, even just talking a little bit with Wes and Port a little bit um, on Twitter. They're they're all just kind of excited and, and they can kind of see things are just like kind of ramping up and kind of going to a different level. Um, did you get a chance to meet Stacy Ford at all? He's kind of the new head of recruiting guy. He might have just I, been seen running him, I, around. He might have been busy. Yeah, he was moving around a lot. He was busy. Um, yeah. yeah, but I seen him a little bit, but I didn't get to introduce myself. A lot of a lot of positive things being said about him. So he's kind of hit the ground running, obviously, um, as the one who's kind of taking over that recruiting department a little bit. Um, but a lot of positive buzz from that standpoint. Um, and I think it was obviously a smart move to have the alumni there, um, and they kind of get to see the recruits. The recruits kind of get to see them. I know you had uh, MJD was there, I believe. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, some other notable guys, I'm sure that would kind of catch the eye of even recruits as he's as, you know, oh, my God, there's uh, MJD or whoever the kid. Oh, my God, there's Josh Woods uh, and Chris Barnes. So um, he's saying that Chris Barnes, I guess. <laughs> um, but no, but I, I so I, I think I think that that was kind of cool for them to have um, just kind of have that out there. Um, did you get a chance to talk to MJD or or any of the other alumni, anyone? Maybe you got to meet for the first time uh, among that alumni group. Um, to meet alumni, no, I think you know, just highs and you know, there was a lot of OGs there that I, I didn't know. I mean, no, yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm asking. You don't have to give names, but like, was there even some OGs that you weren't even like familiar with there? I mean, there was a whole yeah, a whole class of mm-hmm. you know OGs that you know Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl, you know, type mm-hmm. teams like. Yeah, I think 70s and 80s, like, yeah, um, a, a big group of them were there, and then all the way down to, um, you know, John Gaines and and some yeah. of the, the guys that have just, you know, just recently left the program. Um, but honestly, a lot of the 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 love and you know, respect I got was from the current players, just um, even the ones like I said, Femi, like guys that I haven't met before coming, you know, uh, introduce themselves, saying what's up. And um, yeah, just asking, you know, just picking game, you know, asking for advice and, you know, mm-hmm. how, I'm, you know, how I'm doing and things of that, of that nature. And, you know, like I said, having a guy like Scott White, who um, I credit a lot of, you know, my growth in, in my football IQ and knowledge of the game. Um, I was just telling telling the linebackers like, bro, you have a really good resource right now. You need to, you know, get get with him as much as you can and get on that board and, you know. That's especially you don't know, sound like camera drawing. I'm like, bro, take advantage of having this guy in the building, and um, you know, being there as much as you can on that board. So uh, excited to yeah see 
where the program is going and feeling the love. I'm going to try to get to the spring game. Um, I know a lot of the other alumni are going to, too, as well. So um, it's, it, it should be exciting. I don't know. Coach Foster was saying something. I don't know if they're going to have alumni. Some, some way, I think, a part of the spring game, maybe signing autographs or something. Um, oh, maybe. I think I did hear something about that. Like they're doing autograph signings. I heard about the like the current players. Um, you, you might. Yeah, that, I know that's that's actually. always the thing. I think they'll let the fans on the field um, with the current players. But if you catch me or any of the other you know guys around, come say what's up. Um, was that something they that they did before? I think you said you only were there for one Rose Bowl spring game. I think during your time, but was that like a thing? Even when you're being recruited, do they do they they have that kind of engagement and interaction with? I remember two there was two players where their lines were so long that they had to cut oh, it. Oh damn. Josh Rosen and Miles Jack. Like okay. Miles Jack was literally getting while they were current while they, they were current players, players security, right? Security had to block him off and and damn. Yeah. And he, for him to to be like, okay, Miles gotta go. Um damn. yeah, but I've never seen alumni do it. But yeah, those two I remember like having a really long line. Was Miles Jack a five star? I don't think so, but oh. he was him. I'm just kind of curious, like, like what kind of like superstars? Because I know obviously there was a lot of buzz on on Rosen, obviously. So like that was somewhat. I'm not surprised. Oh yeah, my that, you know, my popular. class had a, had a a good good handful of. Well, that class had a good. I think a lot of five stars as well. Um, but I know that class and my class probably had the most five stars in recruiting. Oh, just in general at UCLA. I think, well, yeah, those were like two I know the, of the highest ranked mm -hmm. classes, I'm pretty sure. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, good deal. Um, trying to think of anything else. Um, the guys are still getting fed well. I kind of asked about the nutrition. They said that. <laughs> they said the nutrition is, is more or less the same, except the food is a lot tastier now. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> That's a, um, a shape pitch question. The, speaking of shape pits, that's someone I wanted to ask you about. Did you catch up with him? Uh, oh, Coach Jay, yeah, Coach Jay is. Coach Jay, yeah, he's a, bro, it's so it's so weird to him in a coaching role. <laughs> like for me personally, yeah, he yeah, came yeah. to me before the practice. And was like, do you want to play script? And I was like, no, Shay, I don't want to play script. <laughs> he was like, he's like, my bad. They told me to ask the alumni. <laughs> so what? Like, like, like the practice. Like the practice, like the schedule, like the what period? Yeah, period yeah, and, like yeah, and all you that. Got one, it, was just, <laughs> it was just, it just funny because it's Shay, but like yeah, seeing <laughs> Shay out there, bringing the energy, making sure the the situation is set up right, like the down markers are set up, the right group is on the field. Mm -hmm. Just seeing him in that role is uh is fun to see. Um, and so one thing about him he's working with the defensive backs now i think he's working with the cornerbacks now i don't know if you noticed that but he's working with the with the cornerbacks now um which is a little different because he was with norton and, and the linebackers last year um so good to still see him there um i guess my my other final question for you is like what else did you guys get to do while you were there like you guys got to watch practice but did you guys get to go in the facility does the facility look any different than, than what it was when you were i don't think you guys had the vr stuff back in the day but um they were built they were yeah, building yeah. it up <laughs> um now nah, me and me and chris went just kind of we kind of got there a little earlier so we kind of just yeah walking around mm -hmm. went in linebacker room just <laughs> just to see how stuff was set up they got they got fridges in the in the position rooms now they didn't have that <laughs> um chris chris is fat so he he checked and see if there was any food in the in the training table uh <laughs> In the trays, the little burner tray, you know what I'm saying? Like the, mm -hmm. you know, like cater catering trays. Yeah, yeah opening yeah. those up to see if there was still. Food oh yeah, the the metal uh, burners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then um, no, yeah, we went around practice. I mean, if we wanted to, does that? Like, we went down to the locker room after, but um, yeah, it's 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 a it's like a, a opening family environment again. I think I would say where, uh, yeah, just like as an alumni, feeling the love. Mm -hmm. um and yeah and that 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 feeling of of family and like coach foster said like he wants you know people around you know to support the program and like just be there for the player just having you know being a resource um yep. so i think like i said i think everything is going in the, in the right direction and then just trust the process 
everything seems to be going in the right direction. Uh, a lot of fans are obviously excited. I'm, I think I'm going to try and get out there this Saturday. I might not go Thursday, but I'm going to try and be there Saturday just because I want to see the people on the wall. Was it like packed? Like, was the wall full? Because it's kind of thin on I the mean, weekdays. Obviously, people are working and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a good amount. It's just seeing seeing mm-hmm. seeing faces, you know, is yeah, brewing fans there. Just yeah, having being them be a part of being involved. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And and you know, opening it up to them, like as fans, like you're a part of this too. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So, um, yeah, it's a good time at UCLA right now. Look, man, I'm just trying to go on a Saturday. See some nice folks from Twitter. Hopefully they got a they got a grill going or something. I don't know. Can you I don't know if you have the grill going in the parking structure, but somebody should get one going. Tailgate. Someone should tailgate. get one going. Like yeah, go all start out tailgating with it. Saturday practices. Make it an event. Have have the time of your life. Um, but no, it was it was all good. It's been good. It's been good vibes out there. Uh Deshaun Foster has been great. I did ask him, I don't want to say a difficult question, but I but I you know, but but we're just kind of like you're, you're kind of moving past all the easy questions now. So I'll throw this one at you real quick. Uh, so I don't know if you saw. Chip had offered and may, maybe you can explain. And I, I think I kind of know why Chip offered mm-hmm. a, lo- a long snapper from Elon. So he transferred he transferred in. He Where? OK, first of all, where where is Elon? I only know Elon Musk. Okay, good question. Let's look it up. I'm gonna guess like New York or something. Uh North Carolina, a private university in North Carolina. I don't know if that's division two or what. Anyways, so they offer this long this long snapper. He was he's supposed to he was like third most efficient long snapper or something. Um one of the ones that ahead of him was Bo Gardner, who transferred who tra- who left UCLA and went to be the long snapper at Georgia um during the offseason. But so he wasn't even he this this long snapper wasn't even on the spring roster, but apparently what he said on Twitter yesterday was, "Oh, they called him and told him that he was not going to be on the team." <laughs> he said, "Oh, you're not going to be on the you're not going to be on the team." It was kind of like almost a casualty of like the coaching changes in a way. So mm-hmm. I kind of had to. Ask, no one wanted to ask Foster, so I had to ask him. I said, "Hey, <laughs> to Sean, <laughs> like." what went into this decision like what um you know is it true like what what kind of happened there and he's like yeah uh i forgot i forgot what he said but he was kind of you know but he kind of he owned it and it was just it's just kind of it's just kind of a a, you know you when you kind of see because foster's always like chill and like very reserved very chill but like yeah he's kind of it's kind of nice to to see him also be stern a little bit too so when I asked mm-hmm. him, he's he was kind of like, yeah, that's kind of pretty much what happened. And he said, as a, as the head coach, I have the right to do that in certain situations. And this was one of them. And I was like, OK, <laughs> he just kind of left it at that. But it, even just like um, the way he answers questions, like he can kind of I don't want to say take them serious. because I think he takes them all serious. But like he takes ownership of the decisions he's making. He doesn't try to dance around them. Uh, even when mm-hmm. we talked to to EB and um, you know he kind of mentioned we kind of asked like what is the relationship with Deshaun Foster and, and the offense and uh, does EB kind of have the the freedom to just do what he wants or whatever and uh, with the offense and EB said it's a collaborative effort right just among you know all the guys on the staff and stuff which is you know which is good um, and then so we asked Foster about it he said yeah it's obviously collaborative but he said it's my it's my team. You know, like, so what I said kind of goes deal. And I was like, ooh, like, I like that. Like, it's just like it's ownership because a lot of times with Chip and I'm not trying to compare Deshaun to Chip, but Chip would always like say. Um, it was, oh, all the coaches together, like it was everything was collaborative, everything was collaborative, which is fine and which could be true. But um, I don't know. It's just like interesting just to see a different tone from Deshaun. Um, well, now that we're kind of moving away from a lot of like the easy questions and stuff and like, how was your first month of camp and stuff? So now we're just kind of moving on into like the nitty gritty. And as things pop up, you know, tell us about Ali Caho, tell us about um, how you're going to address the edge rusher in the transfer portal, um, different things like that. So it's just been nice. It's been nice to see. So make sure you guys are checking out the press conferences. Is, is, I guess part of the point that I'm making um, to see what Deshaun Foster says, obviously 
Uh, read all of our stories, ocregister.com, for all the stories that me and my colleagues are writing about the team. Um, but, yeah, overall, it's just a good vibe. Um, I think we're going to be talking to more assistant coaches. Um, so getting to meet a lot of the new coaches. Um, I'm kind of curious to see how that goes. But um, everyone seems to be enjoying their spring, and and hopefully uh, it stays that way. Um, anything else, Josh, before we head out? Anything that I missed? Anything? Um else from practice you want to talk about no i I think we we got everything now i think we did get everything um so we'll kind of we'll kind of wrap things up there so there's officially no more there's no one that you were teammates with on the roster anymore right hudson havermill um damn wait um (laughs) wait there's still more people no need uh keegan I thought we were uh, done with everybody. I think God. Logan Lawyer came the year after. Um, I should have played with Addison. I didn't get to play with him. Okay, Madrano. Um, oh, you see, you did play. Okay, okay yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Vaney, uh There, there's a handful of guys that yeah are still around. Uh, Josh, so, uh, Carl, uh, on Carlin. On okay, yeah, uh, yeah, Josh Carlin. So the, and those are all like five. Chase, guys, Chase, right. How can I forget Chase Griffin? Chase Griffin, yeah. President, <laughs> got to see my boy. Um, speaking of Chase Griffin, real quick, um, they asked Deshaun about it, and I'm not surprised, and I've seen him do it before. I guess Chase Griffin was talking to Congress again. You didn't see that? I, mean, I saw it like a like a month ago when he's doing it again, like recently. Uh, I mean, it might have just they might just asked it because I think it whoever, whoever just, asked yeah, it hasn't, maybe just... hasn't, wasn't hasn't been around. Um, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but it just like it's Chase, like it fits him so well. Like I hope he does get into politics one day because it's just <laughs> that's just him. Like I want to vote for you. You know what I'm saying? Like it's his personality. Right. Great guy right. to have. I seen that part. Um, mm. he, yeah, he's just he again. That's like somebody great to have. One of the best nil student athletes in the country mm-hmm. and for a coach to ask you know for advice like that's major and yeah. um because clearly it matters to mm-hmm. coach foster so um actually listen to to a you know a student athlete like chase is is big well yeah when you got the nil king there i mean yeah i mean you'd be silly not to ask him um anyways we do gotta get chase griffin on the on the podcast at some point um but yeah so We'll try and have some more content for you guys. I'm still going to try and get some interviews uh, for you guys as we kind of move along through the spring and obviously into fall camp and whatnot. Coachella's coming up, Josh. So I'm going to be busy with that uh, in two weeks, something like that. So that's going to be a thing. Are you familiar you with anyone on the lineup? Spring game? That's spring game or not? After. Uh, the next the week after. I wouldn't oh, miss okay. the spring game. I got to see what all the hype's about. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't that um what Tyler the creator is he on the lineup is he not, again? no is he, I, is he not that's not he's not day two i don't think so he was on it i think you think about last year he was he's been there like the last he's been there like two of the last four times so i don't think he's there what are the what are the headlines um, let's see i need you to put me on game josh i need you to kind of catch oh, oh, the headliner, headliner. See, okay. hey, look, Dude, honestly, I, though, I'm gonna be I'm honest not, with you, Coachella's not my vibe either, but they had me go for work, and so I'm not gonna say no. I, yeah, I feel okay, I feel that. Me personally, I'm not a big crowds guy. I think me being as a bigger person, um, mm-hmm. than, than average folk, I don't like being, um, touched by everybody. And as far as like the mosh pit vibes and like the crowded yeah. vibes, like mm-hmm. I would much rather be to the side, you know, kind of. Yeah, vibing out. So, you know, concerts. I'm more of a concert guy than a okay. than a festival guy. So, I learned that the hard way. I went to the my first Coachella was one with Beyonce, and we had to be in the front. Got packed like sardines. It was crazy. Um, people were passing out left and right because they were hyperventilating mm-hmm. and everything. It was wild. Um, um, do you know anything from Lana Del Rey? I'm sure you heard of these people or Doja Cat. Those are the other headliners. Yeah, definitely not my type of festival, man. No, not your vibe. I'm gonna let, see. Uh, let me go to stage. Let me go to stagecoach the week after. 
a stagecoach. I, I'd be down to do a stagecoach. I, I, I would have. I'd be open to it. Okay, real quick. Um, Ice Spice. Hmm. They do call me Ice Spice in Canada when I have my hair out. <laughs> okay. Which is crazy. Like That's it was crazy. a joke on my team last year, which is crazy. That's wild. Okay, they're not having you rap or anything, though, right? No chance. No, okay, no chance. Um, all right, all right. Ice Spice, okay. But do, okay, but do you like Ice Spice? This is a safe space. Like yeah. Okay. 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 I, really, really catchy like, beats. Really, really catchy beats. That's what I'm saying. Like people are like, you really like it? I'm like, hell, I don't know half of what she's saying, but it's catchy. So, um, anyways, um, this is a safe space here at the Believe in UCLA Football Podcast. Thank you guys again so much for listening. Um, as always, we'll try and bring some more episodes to you guys, obviously, as we get through a busy spring season. Um, but thanks again, as always, Josh, for joining us. Everyone, thank you guys for listening. If you guys haven't noticed or aren't aware, and maybe I should put a link so you guys are aware, um, we're posting up the videos on YouTube. So make sure you guys go over to the YouTube channel. You can just type in Believe in UCLA Football Podcast. Just type it in on YouTube, and you can see our faces over there. Um other than that, make sure you like, um, subscribe, follow, do whatever you need to do on your favorite audio platform. Um, it helps us out. It goes a long way. If you have any questions, make sure you ask Josh or Josh and I. Um, and yeah, so thank you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you, everybody.